Hello, it's Robert here again from My Climate to Me. We're here in the Mediterranean biome at the Eden Project in Cornwall. Now we're here to speak to Tim Smith, the visionary behind the Eden Project. We've heard on the grapevine, he's got a cracking question for us. Let's go find out what it is. So Tim, here we are at the Eden Project, and for the benefit of people that haven't been down here to see you yet, can you tell us a little bit about what you're trying to do here and also where the inspiration came from for it? This baby that you see around me was my idea. I dreamt it up over the third pint of beer at the Lawn Rock Inn in Goran Haven. Um, the joy of this place actually is that when I first moved to Cornwall, I was obsessed by what everybody else, everybody else called the lunar landscape of the clay. Uh, the area, for those who are not in Cornwall, uh, is characterized by a spine of rotting granite, uh, which produces the best clay in the world. And over the last 200 years, it has thrown up a landscape of huge piles of clay waste and huge holes uh, and everybody's viewed it as depressing and when I got to Cornwall I thought actually is it depressing or is it a wonderful stage on which to do something. One of the things that no botanic garden in the world had ever done was to do the really obvious thing of saying that without plants there is no life on earth. Which is a pretty important thing to have forgotten to say. Tim I'd be really interested to hear your ideas for the future of the Eden Project and how you think people around the world might have to adapt um, individually to the a changing climate, perhaps taking on the principles of what you're trying to do here. I think one of the things that becomes apparent to you when you do a project like Eden is that initially your vanity is slaked by doing something that's wonderful and everybody tells you how great you are. Then there are nights when you've had that third glass of wine that you ask yourself a really horrid question. If the Natural History Museum, if Kew, if Eden, if all the other great institutions were as good as we publicly say they are, how come culturally as a nation we haven't changed and adopted the sort of lifestyles that would be suggested uh, from anything you saw within them? We know that we are living in a way that is unsustainable. We know with simple mathematics that with the numbers of us consuming ever more, because of course one of our aspirations is that people should become better off, which means that we will be doing more. And I think the biggest uh, challenge for our generation is to reinvent what more is, redefine what growth means. So for example, will we be clever enough to create resource loops of all materials and so nothing is wasted? Because in nature, nothing is wasted. It, it, it cycles, it cycles, it cycles. And I feel wherever I go at the moment that there's a lot of very smart people are moving towards that. And I'm really intrigued about whether many of the smart men and women who are, uh, well, all over the planet, will actually rise to the challenge of reimagining things. Because I think we're ready, we're ready. We've seen all sorts of things that the fault lines in society and, and, and in the systems that we have um, that suggest that this is going to be the way we're going forward. And I, I've been doing a lot of work in China. And for, for the Eden Project, that is our next destination I would expect that within the next 18 months we would have built an Eden project in China but it's not going to be like this it will be a response to China not a response to a clay pit in Cornwall. Tim this is the point where we get to offer you the opportunity to ask our scientists a climate question so go ahead what would you like to ask? My question to the scientists is for a sum not far distant from 300 billion dollars US you could plant swathes of trees across the sub-Saharan latitudes and into India as well, to a quantity that would be sufficient to remediate climate change for a thousand years. Could the scientists reflect for a moment that if their lives depended on it and they had to give an answer to the best guess, do they believe that the cloud nucleation caused by planting giant swathes of forest across those latitudes could genuinely have that impact? And if so, would they be prepared to champion that as a major global campaign? Wow, what a fantastic day we've had here at the Eden Project. And what a great question from Tim. My next stop is now to go and speak to some scientists.